Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have something from Bamberger. Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Yay. Very, very good. 108 proof. Very, very nice. 40, 54%. And this is the 2020 release. Now on the back of the bottle it does say bottled by Michter. So it is a source whiskey still. Now this is our batch L. 20G1522 and it is a 700 liter um, bottle 955 bottles of this was released and um, what we have over here is I paid 159 euros basically for this I was at a whiskey fair down called Whiskey Palantina in the southern part of Germany and um, there's a Brand ambassador here in Germany uh, for Michters her name is Sandra or Sandra and I was at her stand, I interviewed her in German, and I said, hey, I see a bottle of Bamberger, can I buy it? She says, well, and they um, bundled together with a bottle of your choice, 200 euros. It's so, like, all right. <laughs> and so a normal bottle costs 150 euros, so I basically paid about 150 euros, 159 if I get the other bottle on sale. So what am I going to compare it to? I'm going to compare it to Shanks. Also the same thing. Interesting enough, 955 bottles as well in the 2020 um, release here. So this has 45.6% um, ABV. This has 54. Now both of these have chinkapin in them. A little disappointed by that. I'm not a fan of chinkapin. Now chinkapin would be our Krakos. Krakos is the oak. We have Krakos Alba, we have Krakos Robor, we have Krakos Mühlenbergi. Um, that would be here what we have at this moment. We actually call it yellow oak over here in German would be the literal translation. So the 2018 is when they started releasing both of these. And the 2020 version here we have is very, very nice. Um, they use three-year-old... Um, dried wood that has been dried for three years outside many many of the barrel makers independent stave company and so on kelvin and so on they use two years but these are three years yay now a lot of that cheap supermarket bourbon might just be kiln dried wood and you could and you should be able to notice a difference here so i once asked a friend um he said i asked him why does a whiskey for example here 54 percent taste much thicker much much more viscosity when it's 46.5 percent and he said jason every chemist knows that the viscosity of water and alcohol is the highest at 45 percent 90 proof i was like i didn't know that well jason you're not a chemist apparently not so um what i'm going to do and a little bit of an homage here to my fellow youtuber jason over at mash and drum he actually compared exactly these two bottles from 2018 and he talked about the nose the palate the consistency and the finish and gave a ranking i love the nose on this hmm i probably will like the consistency on this so let's see if this can actually win with its palate and with its finish now on the nose I do get a little bit of a oakiness, a little bit of a caramel, cloves, cinnamon, but if I go over to the shanks, I get a blast of the caramel, a blast of that, a little bit of cloves, that vanilla, that, that woody goodness. I have fallen in love with the nose of shanks very, very often. Uh, Beautiful, beautiful nose. It's very hard to find something or beat it. This does not. All right. So let's go. Um, I forgot to mention in my other video, of course, Mistress chose these two names because it's a legacy whiskey. Um, this was John Schenk came over a Mennonite from Switzerland, um, went over to Pennsylvania, probably also due to religious prosecution, started up. Started distilling, yay, Mennonites. And um, that was the first distillery on his farm there in Pennsylvania. A uh, generation basically later, the farm, the distillery was bought with the farm and they changed the name into Bumberger. 
Uh, Mishra Sadeh basically bought the mar the brand in the nineteen mid nineteen fifty uh, nineteen nineteen nineties. I'm sorry, and um, and then they said, okay, let's start doing this. Let's do a Shanks. Let's do a Bumbaga. And there was a little bit of even a battle there of the rights. Who owns the rights for Bumbaga? Um, because Mistress did not buy the rights with it, and they did win. I don't know if they paid a lot of money and they settled out of court or whatever, but now they have their legacy whiskeys, which goes way back to um, the 1700s, the 1800s, and even in the 2000s we have then the new distillery here with Mistress. So, let's try this Bomberger. good so got a hit kick kicks up and then for me there's that chinkapin kicks in it towards the end it's a little thin for the 54 percent the viscosity is going to be one here by the shanks it's got some nice sugar in there there's a little bit of a chocolate milk chocolate moment going on there there's a little bit of plum and there's caramel it's a good whiskey. It's definitely a C++ whiskey on the palate, on the nose as well. Is it going to make me run out and go get it? My category is A, why haven't you bought it? B, buy it so you can buy it if you want to. D, you don't need to buy it. And F, why was the stuff even made? So this is something you buy if you want to. This is not something where you have to buy it and you're going to miss out if you haven't bought it. This is something that is a... I don't want to say ploy, but it is a marketing tool used to have a art has a, um, a, a um, scarcity that makes us want to have it. Yeah, um, not many people get it. Ten thousand bottles about this on the in the whole world. Um, of those over nine hundred in the U.S. and many people will be able to buy it for a certain price, but many people will be looking for it and never see it. And that actually creates a lot more hype and a lot more of a um, that shortage mentality that makes us even want to have it more. Yeah, something that's very, very rare and exotic ooh, has to be good. And if you spend any time here on my channel, you will know that rare and exo exotic often means not worth the money and not worth your time and not worth the effort. All right, so... Um, so as I said, it goes up a little bit and the chinkapin comes in. This has more chinkapin, in my opinion. At least I have the feeling that it has more chinkapin. I might be wrong. The finish goes here every day of the week. Bum bad guys. Much, much better. On the taste, it's much better. This is a tiny little bit sweeter. It has a little bit more of the baking spices in there. But this is more of a typical bourbon. Oh, wait a second. It's not even a bourbon. It's a sour mash whiskey. Why? It doesn't meet, meet the regulation of 51% of anything. There isn't for 51% corn. There isn't 50% rye. There isn't 50% wheat. There isn't 51% um, barley. And therefore, there is no category for this. And therefore, it's a American bourbon. And they just added here Kentucky because the state it was made in. And it's Kentucky Sour Mash Whiskey. By the way, there is no such thing. There is no such real regulation or category Sour Mash Bourbon. It's all a marketing ploy. Hmm. But it's a good one. All right, I must admit. And I like the nice little label here and so on. Very nice. A little bit old-fashioned and so. Reminds me of the Noah Mills and the Booker's old bottles and so on. Just an old, just like a wine bottle that we used to take and use that for certain things. Well done. Is this whiskey worth $90 to $100? In my book, no. Is it worth $150, $160 that I paid for it? Definitely not. Is this something that I would, if I had to choose between the two of these, which ones would I choose? If it was a day that I just nosed the whiskey, Shanks is going to win. If it's I'm going to drink the whiskey, Bomberger is going to win. But Bomberger seems a little bit more 
more on the normal side. And the Shanks has a little bit of that extra special moment in there. And so I think I'm going to tend a little bit more towards the Shank. Usually you don't have the choice of buying either of those. If you do have the choice, buy both. <laughs> Make some friends happy. Open them up and share them with people that would never otherwise have the opportunity to do so. And maybe throw a little bit of a private tasting or invite some friends over. Have a tiny little of a barbecue. And then in the evening, um, have, this, have these two whiskeys. Pull a couple of mixtures and just do a tasting with your friends. It's the best thing you can do. It's just to make, share whiskey with others. Create experiences. That's what whiskey actually should be for. For Value for money, more of a D plus, C minus moment. Here I'm D plus, mm, at least the price I paid for it. I would still go towards this as a different profile than many other of the bourbons I've had. And that nose is just fabulously wonderful. So my question of the day is what other bourbons do you know of in the United States that have a bottle celebrating their pasts, either their own past or the bot uh, brand past? So we have here the Shanks um, Distillery. We have the Bumback Distillery. Are there any other bottles out there? It doesn't have to be from Michters, come from anyone else that have bottles back then celebrating certain um, heritage, certain legacy from their own history. Just write them down in the chat. Maybe I know some of them. Maybe I don't. Maybe I forgot some of them. Maybe I need to learn some ab about some of them. But that would be actually great that we can um, interact in this manner and get to know each other a little bit better. And you can teach me something as well. Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. I hope you like, subscribe, and tell others. All the best. Bye-bye.